Kim pulled her mission shirt over her head, grabbed a hairbrush from the bedside table. She felt better than she had in weeks. Everything seemed brighter, crispier, clearer. Life seemed much more brighter and more vibrant. She had spent the last three days in Global Justice Medical Unit, getting examined and testing in her new form. Much more pleasant than she was when she had first arrived. The outlook was encouraging. She had gained at least two inches in height. She now stood eye to eye with Ron. Her muscles were now more toned, slightly denser, increased in strength. While she wasn't likely to be able to rip lockers off of doors with one hand, she could lift quite a bit more than she used to. Her speed and reflexes were enhanced too. Once again, the blizzard, the bizarrely super fast speed that Faye could move at, but definitely in an Olympic level. But the best part of form of all was Kim's was her senses. Everything that had came through her senses were sharper, more acute. Sounds were clear. Sense were more acute. She could even distinguish between two various types of wood just by feeling the grain. Food, ta food tasted better. Even things that she didn't normally like were now more flavorable. But the best thing was her sight. She had always had a perfect 2020 vision, but now as far as global justice can tell, she had almost about unheard of 20 25, 20 25 visual accurately. The doctor had described it as having an HD TV in your eyes. The details and the colors were incredible. In all of it, it looked like Faye had left her with several gifts to help her in the world saving activities. Kim liked to think that Faye had appreciated more ironically. But she had been given a clean bill of health, although she was advised to take another couple weeks off to rest. Her parents are also insisted that she put a off starting college until the spring semester. You deserve a vacation, Kim, were the exact words. They had even offered to pay for her and Ron to said vacation. She hadn't decided where she wanted to go, yet she had other things in mind. Kimberly, came Dr. Director's voice. Kim frowned. There was one of them. Kim then turned to the doorway way, and Dr. Director was there. Her arm recast and slinged. Kim folded her arms. Dr. Director, I heard you were being released, so I thought I'd stop by to say goodbye. Kim didn't say anything. She then quirked an eyebrow. Director sagged. All right, the global justice leader said. I wanted to say I'm sorry for what happened to you, to your family, to Ron, his family, and Wade. I let the job get the better of me. You sold me out, Kim said. I had a no, no, you're right. I sold you out, and there was no excuse for that. Where's ICAD 1, Kim asked. He bugged out when Faye escaped, but when I turned everything over to the UN Secretary General, he dissolved the International Center of Assurance Development, and ICAT 1 is out of a job, and if he shows his face anywhere in the world free, he'll be arrested. Of course, he took a great care of letting everyone out to see his face, Kim stated. Yes, Kim, I... Do you know what really disappoints me, Betty? Kim interrupted. I looked up to you. I was pretty sure you would always do the right thing, regardless of the rules. But as soon as your job was threatened, you caved and you took advantage of that admiration and you suckered to me. We used to talk about me coming home to work for global justice when I got out of college, but all this had made me really seriously reconsider. Kim then walked across the room, fixed on Dr. Director with a stern gaze. And I will never, ever work for you, Dr. Director. Not if this is what global justice really like. Not if there's goons on the payroll roll like Kimmerer. Director then looked up surprised. You know about him? Please tell me you didn't really actually think my parents wouldn't tell me exactly what happened while I was running around Paris. Director nodded. I should have expected this, and if I was in your shoes, I'd probably make the same decision. Good luck, Kimberly. Kim then turned and back to the window. Dr. Director began to leave. And when she heard the door open, Kim then decided to let Global Justice Leader off the hook. Dr. Director? Yes? Kim then looked back at over her shoulder. I won't work for you. But that does not mean I still won't work, work with you from time to time. Dr. Director gave a small smile and, thank, and said, Thank you. You're welcome. Ah, Kim Possible, said Senior, Senior, Senior. How good of you to enjoy me. May I offer you some lunch? Thank you, Kim said, pulling out a chair and sat down. The two of them were sitting in the atrium on the Operton's Arms, the most expensive restaurant. 
A waiter arrived with a menu. Kim ordered a small salad and water, and the waiter nodded and vanished. Where's Junior? Kim asked. He is currently visiting Miss Rockweiler. She regained cautiousness a few days ago. Junior has been visiting her every day. Wow. Kim's voice then choked up as she fought to ask. How is she? Surprisingly much better than she originally had appeared, Senior answered. While she will have to go undergo physical therapy once her bones have mended, there shouldn't be anything lasting thing, permanent damage. So I have been able to procedure every services of some of the reconstructive surgeons in the world to aid her. You care that much about her? Not necessarily, but Junior does. And I will gladly do anything to encourage Junior to step out of the narcissistic shell he's going to be in for so long. Senior picked up the wine glass and sat next to his plate, swallowed his contents. Ah, lovely then. Now, my dear Kim Possible, I presume your visit has something to do with the matter we discussed? Yes, Kim said. She paused as the waiter arrived with her salad. When he had gone, she leaned forward. I found the person responsible for what happened to Bonnie. Really? That's excellent news, Senior said. He pulled out a small notebook from his inner jacket pocket. What is their name so where they can be found? That won't be necessary. Oh, and why is that? Kim fixed Senior with a solemn stare. The elderly villain quirked an eyebrow. Are you telling me that you, Kim Possible, actually look a... I did what I had to be done. She said it was a mince, and she wasn't going to come quietly. I see. And you were certain they will not be returning? Quite, Kim replied. I'd, I made sure of that. There was a pause as Senior digested the information, and Kim took a mouthful of salad. And after that moment, Senior then reached into his back pocket and produced a checkbook. Very well, I would say that. Given the circumstances, our agreement was reached. He then picked up a pen and scribbled on out a check. He then ripped it out of the checkbook and handed it to Kim. I realize that you do not charge for services like this, but I think you have rightfully earned this. Kim then took the check and stared at the amount, and then she looked back up. I can't possibly... You can and you will, Senior said, given Miss Rottweiler's condition. I can guess how difficult this particular mission was for you. I am also aware there was some sort of altercation with global justice during this difficult. I think the amount reflects on that. But still... Senior held up a hand. If you do not take the check, I can assure you that the amount will find its way into your bank account some other way and manner. My mind is made up on this, Kim. Possible. You have truly earned it. Please do not insult me with false moodously. Kim then looked at the check again, then folded it and put it into her pocket. Thank you. Senior smiled warmly at her. No, no, thank you. And now, may I attempt you with some dessert? I understand the house specialty is a decent little confection called the Genocide by Chocolate. Shigo then opened her eyes and saw Kim Possible standing right in front of the foot of the hospital bed and groaned. Oh, great. I thought I told him no visitors. Special case, Kim said. Part of the new system. I get to taunt you even before you get back to prison now. I'd rather be waterboarded, Shigo replied. What the hell do you want? I want to see how you were doing. Ron said you were banged up pretty bad. I was. Just about have every damn bone broken, but I heal fast. Shigo gestured at her legs that were still cast in an attraction. If it weren't for that, I'd still be kicking your ass around this hospital right now. Tell you what, come back in three days and I'll be happy just to do that. Kim smirked. Yeah, right. I'll put that on my calendar. Shigo then looked at Kim. So what the hell happened back there? One second you were there and the next, well... Kim gestured to the hospital room. Kim shrugged. You caught me on a bad day. I'm sorry. Shigo frowned. A bad day, right. She then sighed and leaned back. Not that I really care. Just want to know what the, what, whatever it was. I still owe you for it. I expected that, Kim said. She grinned evilly. Anytime you want to bring it, bitch. She go blinked. Okay, that is way out of character for you. What the hell's been going on, Kimmy? Kim smiled again. Less evilly this time. Changes I think you'll find in fights that will be a lot more interesting from now on. New tricks? Oh, you'll see. Kim then went to the door. Get better soon. I'm actually kind of looking forward to it. See you around, Shigo. With that, Kim left the room. Shigo then sat up on the bed and frowned and fought. After a minute, she grinned. So Kimmy finally got found her edge, huh? Good for you, kiddo. So how did it go? Ron asked as Kim got back in her car. 
Pretty good. She almost, she's almost healed, Kim answered, fastening her seatbelt and starting the car. Well, that's good. She's evil and all, but still. Yeah? Who's next? Ron asked. One more stop. Ah, Ron then took out for the window for a few seconds. KP? Yeah? You never really think you told us about what happened between you and Faye. I mean, how did you win? Kim then didn't answer. Then she glanced over at Ron. I didn't actually win, and Faye didn't actually lose. The two of them took out positions facing each other, muscles tense, eyes unblinking. Faye clenched and unclenched her hands. Kim tossed her hair out of her eyes. You ready? Faye called. Ready when you are, Kim answered. There was a brief pause. Then when the both of them were screaming at the top of their lungs, they charged. Faye leaped into the air and thrust a hand forward. Claws extended from her fingers. As she came down, Kim slid to a halt, reached up and yanked the arrow that was still protruding from Faye's leg. Faye screeched in pain and lost control of her landing. Kim smiled in triumph, but quickly faded as Wade, as Faye had landed on her. There was a sharp pain in her chest at the same time she felt something warm and sticky wash over her hand. The two of them crashed to the ground, grunting in pain as they hit. Kim and Faye looked at each other, then down. Faye's claws had sunk deep into Kim's chest, while the arrow Kim had retrieved had gone to Faye's stomach and out her back. Blood was falling freely from both wounds. Faye giggled from the blood flowing in the corner of their mouth. Figures, we can't have it settled without killing each other. Looks like we'll have to go to the way, Dr. Jekyll, huh? We don't have to, Kim said. Oh, what put you, pulled you in the opposite of what I pulled you on? Faye snorted. You confessed me to give up? Not a chance, sister. God, you're stubborn, Kim replied. So are you. That isn't what I was going to suggest. Oh, well, then what then? What we Oh, No, no way. We're dying. You can feel it. We're only talking now because this is only happening in our head. It means I cease to exist. I ain't, That ain't happening. You know there's no other way. We're both dead and we don't. If, it, if this way some of you is still there, I could tell you. I'm most likely not going to forget, forget you ever. Faye frowned and then felt her vision getting darkened. The graveyard around them began to dissolve in the blackness. She then looked up at Kim, who looked like she was going to pass out. I still hate it when you try to play fair. You know that? Faye Ant said. Kim chuckled. Yeah, I know. But what else can I do with dealing myself? Faye returned the laugh and then said, All right, on free. One, two, three. I'm still not exactly sure what happened, Kim said. Faye just sort of dissolved and flowed into me. And the next thing I knew, I was lying in your arms. So she's still there? Ron asked, concerned. She is always there, Ron. Kim explained. The formula just let it let her out. All we did was get rid of the separation. We're whole again. I'm in charge just the way it should be. With a few extras, Ron said. Yeah, Kim smiled. With a few extras, but I think they'll come in handy. Ron smiled briefly and brought up another issue that had been bothering him. Kim, Faye said something during our fight. Are you really afraid that I'll replace you with the monkey power and all? Kim then just glanced over at him briefly, before turning her attention back to the road. A little. I mean, Ron, you've almost got, like, godlike power. Who wouldn't be intimidated by that? Well, that's not going to happen, Ron said firmly. You're the leader of this team. No matter how much power I've got, that won't change. I'm perfectly happy with being your sidekick. They pulled into the parking lot and Kim parked the car, turned it off and faced Ron. Yeah, but I'm not. Ron, she said. You are so much more than a sidekick. You're a wonderful boyfriend, a best friend, and I want you to know that I won't consider you a psych I don't consider you a sidekick anymore. You're my partner, and I just hope that you won't think I'm holding you back if we keep our partnership going like it has been. Never, Ron said, smiling. He took Kim's hand and lead in and kiss her. No one could really replace you, Kim Possible. Kim blushed. Thanks. Ron grinned. No big. Okay, do you want me to go in with you? No, Kim answered. I'll handle myself on this one. Well, here's a surprise, Dean Amy said. As she sat down on the other side of the glass, I didn't expect you to see you again, Kim. Get used to it, Kim said. I just came to tell you that it's over. 
Faye's gone, and she's not coming back. Ah, oh, fiddlesticks, Amy pouted. I was looking forward to meeting her again. Oh, well, I guess I'd see the way how it goes. Kim blinked. That's it? Amy shrugged. Well, this whole mess, it wasn't really that I was trying to accomplish. I just thought it was fun to witness. Now that it's over, oh well. Right, I guess we're done here then, Kim said, getting up. Don't be a stranger, Amy said brightly, as she escorted her back to her cell. Kim left the prison, oddly feeling dissatisfied. While she got back to the car, she found Ron in the video communication with Lord Utterson. Hey, KP, I was just letting Lord Utterson know that we uh, took care of a dark DNA Amy's copy of the Jekyll formula. Yes, indeed, Lord Utterson said. I must command you on your your fruitiveness, Miss Possible. Well, it was a challenge tracking it down, but we found it and finally destroyed it. Dr. Jekyll's legacy is safely destroyed. You can rest easily, Lord Utterson, Kim replied. Excellent. Are you certain? Isn't there anything I can do to repay you for all your hard work? No charge for this kind of thing, sir, Kim said. Ah, yes, but I still deserve a bonus of some sort. Oh, I know. I have a small villa in the south of France that needs a good airing out. Perhaps you and Mr. Stoppable would like to stay as guests for a week or two? Really, Lord Anderson? Kim began. That's not really necessary. She trailed off and fought for a moment, looking at Ron. And thinking about the enforced va vacation her parents were making her take while the check was in her pocket. And a few other thoughts that passed through her mind. The thoughts of the old Kim Possible would never have entertained. She smiled and then looked back at the screen. It's not necessary, she repeated. But it sounds wonderful. Can we get back to you once our plans have finalized? Certainly. I'll have your staff waiting for your call. Thank you again, Miss Possible. You have done a family a great service. Thank you, Lord Utterson. The connection then terminated and Kim started the car. As she drove away, Ron reclined his seat and put his hand out behind his head. All right, a week in France with no school and no missions? Sounds like a paradise. You'll certainly think so. Huh? Remember when I said back up when we'll first set up the apartment? Kim then turned ahead and grinned evilly at Ron. It's going to be so worth it. Ron then, then looked at Kim for a moment, then turned bright red. Dean Amy sighed as she was thrown back in her cell. She looked at the self, uh, shelf of cuddle buddies that were mounted on the wall. Well, it looks like Kim Possible won again, she said, taking the gold class, class feral cockatoo from the shelf. She's such a little hussy, so stuck up and superior. She then sat back down and struck and stroked the stuffed toy. But Faye warned us about this, didn't she? Good thing she had a backup plan. Amy then reached down and parted broken seam from the back of the cuddle buddy. She then withdrew a small glass tube. It was filled with dark red liquid, and the label on it with the tube read, Sample Morgan Fay. She then held it up briefly into the light out of her window and smiled. Well, let her enjoy for now. She'll get what's coming to her eventually. Well, my pretties, that was Kim Possible, The Hyde Factor. A um, Kim Possible fan fiction, or, yeah, it's a Kim Possible fan fiction, written by Shallow15, also known as Aaron Mills. Um, my final thoughts on this story? I honestly really enjoy this story. I mean, it's a pretty good Kim Possible story. I honestly really thought this story was enjoyable. I mean, I remember Space Voyager narrated this story back um, in 2021. And I think he got up to maybe chapter 6 or 7 or something. And he hasn't um, continued narrating the story since then. So I decided to go ahead and check out this story and decided to give this one a read. Because I honestly thought the concept was seeming interesting. You know, having Kim have, like both sides of herself like one's you know friendly and the other one's like evil like Kim's evil persona in it known as Faye Morgan and honestly this story is pretty much inspired by the Jekyll Hyde um, story which I honestly haven't heard of that story in a long time but it's a pretty good famous story and most people probably remember that one so if you guys remember feel free to call well to say anything and all that but, like, not call or anything. But I could definitely say right now that this story was pretty good. 
I'm not gonna lie, when I saw this story, it honestly was really well made. I mean, yeah, I mean, this is an older story that was written in 2007, and it was completed in 2010. So it's a really old story, and I have never heard of this until Space Voyager narrated it. So I thought, you know what? Let me give this one a go. Now, the grammar of the story was mostly good and readable. I could definitely say it was pretty good. Although, there were a couple of spelling errors in this story. Like, I mean, there was some spelling errors here and there in some chapters of the story. I noticed that there was some spelling errors in the story. And there was a couple grammatical errors in each chapter of the story. But, yeah, I mean, those could be easily fixed. I mean, I understand this is like an older story, so I'm sure the authors probably... Well, Aaron Mills or Shallow15, they probably have, you know, improved their writing to make it more better, in a sense. Like, I'm really hoping that they've improved on writing. But, I mean, this was a pretty good story. I mean, the grammar could be fixed up as well as the the spelling errors and that. But it was still readable, and it was still a pretty good story. I like the... The concept of it. I mean, I honestly can see... This is not out of the ordinary for Kim Possible to do stuff like this. Because Kim Possible has done a lot of weird things at times. And that is something I can definitely state right now. Kim Possible does a lot of stuff. And I can see this being the case. Because, you know, we all know Kim Possible has done lots of missions. Even dangerous ones. And this was definitely one story I really enjoyed. But in all the reality... I honestly really like the concept of this story. I mean, it's a pretty good story for Kim Possible's story. And I definitely got to say right now, Shallow Low 15 or Aaron Mills, if you're watching this, I want to say awesome job with this story. I personally liked it. I thought it was amazing. It was a very well-made story. It's definitely a great one. And I recommend you check it out if, well, the other narrations if you haven't. But yeah, like I said, it's a pretty damn good story. Because, you know, in all the reality, I honestly like this Kim Possible story. Next to Dark Future and Dark Regime, which is now being currently written, I personally thought this was a pretty good story. So, anyway, with that being said and that being the case, I'm going to sit here and say right now that it's a fun story. I recommend you guys check this one out if you haven't. And I recommend, you know... This story is on fanfiction.net. You guys can go check it out if you haven't. It's a pretty good story. I recommend you guys check it out. So, anyway, with that being said, um, yeah, I enjoy this story. I honestly really like it. So, with that being said and that being the case, I'm going to sit here and say this right now that this is just simply my own personal opinion. And if you happen to disagree with me, that's fine too. We're all entitled to our own opinions in regards to these creepypastas or fan fictions. And this is simply my own thoughts. If you like this story, that's awesome. But if you don't like it, I respect your opinion. I thought the concept was good. I can honestly see this in Kim Possible. It's pretty good. So anyways, with that being said, um, yeah. I give this story a 9 out of 10. I'm giving it a 9 because... Well, the concept of it was pretty good, and I do like um, the storyline and all, and it seemed to be a pretty good, pretty good story for what it is. Although, the grammatical errors and the spelling errors could be fixed, but I know it's an older story, so yeah, the, because of the spelling errors and the grammatical errors, errors um, I did see them a couple times, so I was having a bit of a hard time reading some parts, but other than that, it's a pretty good story. So anyways, with that being the case, and that being said, um, yeah. What did you guys personally think of this story? Did you enjoy it? Did you not? Also, what you have done personally to help make this story a lot better? Feel free to leave me now where your thoughts are down in the comments below. And yeah, I'm the Lion Queen. I want to thank you so much for watching today's episode. And if you're new to my channel, feel free to leave this video a like. Comment and subscribe if you're new. Ring the bell for notifications to when I upload, so that way... You guys will not miss an upload. And as always, I'll be seeing you all in the next video. And roll the outro because I'm out.